hurricane seasonal forecast is out. Precise figures for the most likely number of storms is 18 uh, with hurricanes. Of those, nine will be hurricanes and four will be major hurricanes. And sharing space weather expertise. What we are monitoring on the sun is the sunspot regions, which can produce solar flares, or we call them solar storms. It's Friday the 27th of May and you're listening to WeatherSnap from the Met Office. Hello, I'm Claire Nazir and welcome to WeatherSnap, the insider's guide to the week's weather headlines. Every year, meteorological centres around the world produce a seasonal outlook for the coming tropical storm season across the North Atlantic, Gulf of Mexico and the Caribbean. This week saw the release of our seasonal forecast here at the Met Office. And to hear more details, I spoke to tropical prediction scientist Julian Hemming. The forecast we just put out for the season coming up June to November it shows a spread of solutions because uh, the model is what we call an ensemble model. So it runs uh, the model many times and sees a kind of spread in possible solutions as to what might happen. But the most likely scenario is that we will have an above average Atlantic tropical cyclone season. The precise figures for the most likely uh, number of storms is 18 uh, with hurricanes. Of those, nine will be hurricanes and four will be major hurricanes. That compares to the more recent average of 14 tropical storms, seven hurricanes and three major hurricanes. So it's indicating an above average season. How accurate are these trends? Do they seem to come true when you analyse what actually happened after the season has finished? What we do do is what we call hindcast, whereby we rerun the model many times for previous seasons to evaluate how well it's done in the past. And it shows some fairly good skill from, from year to year from the hindcast simulations in terms of predicting the most likely uh, activity for the year. Some years it, uh, it doesn't do so well, some years it does better. But the interesting thing about this season is that all the different agencies that have so far put out seasonal forecasts are all saying an above average season. So it's, it suggests that even though we're all using different models, they're all pointing in the same direction. Is there any particular region of the tropical North Atlantic which could see more than others? The one thing to be cautious of with uh, a seasonal forecast is the fact that, certainly from the Met Office model, is that it's a prediction for the activity over the whole of the Atlantic Basin. Now, that includes the, the North Atlantic Ocean, the Caribbean Sea and the Gulf of Mexico. And it is indicating that the area where we might see the, the higher activity is towards the west of the basin. Now, that does include more of the land areas such as uh, the Caribbean Sea and the Gulf of Mexico and the east coast of the USA. That's interesting. The other, obviously, the other aspect of this is global circulations. We're sort of coming out of a La Nina now. And obviously, La Nina, as well as El Nino, is naturally occurring. Does that have some influence or is it something that the models find hard to resolve? It certainly does have an influence. And actually, we thought we were coming out of a La Nina, but actually the indications now from all the uh, models which try to predict La Nina and El Nino conditions is that things are going to hold steady and possibly we stay in La Nina conditions right through the hurricane season. Now, La Nina effectively means that the ocean surface in the eastern Pacific, uh, the equatorial eastern Pacific, is cooler than average. And what that does, that has an effect on the atmospheric circulation, which moves over into the Atlantic. And primarily what it does is reduce wind shear. Now, wind shear is where the wind changes direction and speed as you go up through the atmosphere. Now, if you have low wind shear, then that is good for the development of hurricanes. So La Nina normally means low wind shear over the Atlantic, which then is one of the reasons why we could get enhanced activity. So this information is vital, obviously, for use of the National Hurricane Centre, but also there is a commercial aspect to this as well. Yes, that's right. Um, I mean, seasonal forecasts are not necessarily going to help us in predicting what's going to happen in the, the next week or two, which a lot of people will be interested in. But there are other sectors of, of commerce which are interested to know the likelihood of whether we're going to have a quiet season or a, an active season. And it's particularly the insurance sector are very interested in that kind of information that can give them any kind of heads up as to the likelihood of things going one way or the other during the season. Tropical prediction scientist Julian Hemming.
The adverse effects of solar activity on technology and infrastructure are well established and the Met Office Space Weather Centre is one of a number of facilities around the world tasked with monitoring and predicting energy emissions from the sun. This week, a team of scientists from South Africa paid a fact-finding visit to the UK ahead of the launch of their own 24-7 space weather centre. To tell us more, here's Unfortunate Afungo of the South African National Space Agency. My name is Mpochis Apongo. I'm the head of space weather from the South African National Space Agency. Uh, the Space Weather Center was established in 2010 and we were only working uh, eight hours a day, five days a week. The plan is to move to a 24-7 operational center and that's why we are here for the training for a 24-7 operations. The reason why we're moving to a 24-7 operations is because we are designated by the International Civil Aviation Organization, part of the Global Center for providing space weather information to aviation. The reason why we monitor space weather is because it has impact on technological systems, things like satellite communications, GNSS, navigation and surveillance, as well as uh, high frequency communication. The main driver of space weather is the sun, and what we are monitoring on the sun is the sunspot regions which can produce solar flares, or we call them solar storms. Also, we observe things like coronal mass ejection, CMEs, and uh, solar protons event. Um, those protons are the ones which are mostly can affect satellites. Um, so those are the types of solar storms that we are monitoring in space weather. Space weather is going to become more and more important because um, many things um, autopilots and autonomous vehicles that we are putting together, if there are cars which should be driven by GPS, we need to be very careful and monitoring what's happening in space weather because the space weather has direct impact on those systems and then we need to have very accurate uh, GPS uh, readings and all the things that use GPS or satellite needs to be very accurate. So space weather can um, disrupt and then everything stops if <laughs> we are not careful. Yes. I'm Fortress Afungo, Head of Space Weather at the South African National Space Agency. This week was unseasonably windy across the UK. The upside, however, was a bumper boost in wind power generation. This peaked on Wednesday when enough energy was produced to satisfy half the UK's total energy demand. In addition, if we look back over the last month, nights across the UK have been warmer than average. So, is this spell of warmer, windier weather likely to continue? Here with the outlook, Alex Deacon. This weekend's weather is fairly straightforward. Let's deal with that first of all, because for most, Saturday is going to be a fine day. Yes, it'll be a bit chilly first thing, but then generally dry and bright with good spells of sunshine. There could still be a few showers over northeast Scotland, maybe even one or two over eastern England, but for the vast majority it will stay dry after a sunny start, a bit more cloud around the middle of the day. The breeze is still coming in from the north, but the sun is strong at this time of year, so although the air isn't particularly warm, by the afternoon it'll feel pleasant enough with temperatures in the high teens or maybe low 20s. Sunday is a different beast because we're seeing low pressure actually edge in from the east and strengthen the northerly flow. So that's going to bring more clouds and a chillier feel. Still some bright or sunny spells, particularly South Wales, South West England. And still for Sunday, many places will be dry, but it is going to be cooler and cloudier with temperatures really disappointing for the time of year in the mid-teens for many. And there will still be a few showers, chiefly over the east OK, that's this weekend. How about the longer range? Because the Jubilee weekend is lurking on the horizon. Well, things do get a bit complicated. Certainly cool and showery to start with next week. But as we go towards the following weekend, there is the possibility of some warmer conditions heading up from the south. That warmer air, though, may also bring some thundery showers. And at this stage, it's just too early to tell. There are some signs from computer models that higher pressure may build in during the long weekend, and that could settle the weather down. But I say before we get there, there is the threat of showers during Thursday and Friday. As for the details, well, you're going to have to stay tuned. And the best way to do that, of course, is to follow the Met Office right across social media. 
Thanks, Alex. Well, just before we go, Martin Bowles is here with last week's highs and lows. As usual, we'll start last week's UK weather extremes with a maximum temperature. 27.5 degrees Celsius was recorded at London Heathrow Airport on Tuesday, making that day officially the hottest day of the year so far. The coldest place was Aviemore in Inverness, where 3.8 degrees was recorded early on Tuesday morning. Northern Ireland had a particularly wet day on Monday. 43.4 millimetres was recorded at Loch Fee. The longest daily sunshine was 14.5 hours at Aberdeen Dice Airport on Thursday. Thanks, Martin. That's it for Weathersnap. I'm Claire Nazir. Editor is Adrian Holloway. Thanks for listening. Weathersnap is a podcast by the UK Met Office. For the latest weather conditions where you are, download the Met Office weather app.